experts are warning that Iran's military is getting close to finishing their own nuclear weapon, an atomic bomb. Katie McFarlane with me now. What happens if Iran announces, yep, we got a bomb? Well, first of all, do you believe them? Will they have to give evidence? Will they test a nuclear weapon to show that they actually have it? But the more serious problem is then everybody gets a bomb, right? The Saudis will say, well, if Iran has it, we need our own nuclear weapon. And then chances are Turkey says, well, the other guys have them, we'll need our own. So what you would have very quickly is a nuclear arms race. And the reason it works as a nuclear arms race is Iran will have developed its own nuclear weapon. Saudi Arabia will buy one. They'll buy one from Pakistan. Now, maybe they'll buy something from other countries, North Korea, who knows. But you could see a Middle East, which is the most tension-filled, you know, hair-trigger part of the universe. And then if they all have nuclear weapons, throwing that into the mix, it becomes a very, very, very dangerous world. If they did make such an announcement, what, what do you think uh, President Biden would do? Well, who knows? I mean, the problem with the, the Biden administration is they've always wanted to placate and appease Iran. And what's that led to? Well, now we see that Iran's proxies are firing on American military vessels. And even though President Biden had launched this attack a couple of days ago, supposedly at the source of these uh, missile attacks, you know, it didn't take them out, maybe did 20 percent, 30 percent damage, but didn't remove their ability to fire on American vessels. So I'm not sure what he would do. I mean, I but, guess he would try to, quote, double down on diplomacy, whatever that means. But I don't see them stopping Iran's nuclear program. You know, overnight, or I think it was yesterday, the Houthis fired a cruise missile at an American destroyer. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, it was shot down by a yeah. U.S. fighter jet. If it had not been shot down, there would have been significant casualties. There would have been deaths on board an American ship fired on by a Houthi uh, cruise missile. That could not be ignored. What would be the response to that? We'd be at war. You know, and here's the thing that everybody's worried about or people in the military have worried about throughout this is that so far we've either ignored the Iranian attack, proxy attacks or in the case of the missiles coming from the Houthis towards commercial or American military vessels is we've um, done perimeter defense. In other words, we see the missile in the air, it's about to hit the ship, we destroy the missile. We know where that missile came from, but we haven't taken out the source of that. We haven't gone to the missile launchers. Biden had, you know, a, an attack, but it didn't do any real good, obviously, because they're firing back. The thing I always have worried about is that by placating Iran, by appeasing Iran, what you're doing is, in fact, making more war more likely, because eventually something is going to get through our defensive perimeter, and you are going to have a ship that gets sunk yeah. or American casualties, just like you've said. And what happens then? We are at war, a war we don't want, a war we're not prepared to fight, and a war we could have avoided. It's been more than 100 days since Hamas terrorists attacked Israel. President Biden reportedly losing his patience with Netanyahu. He wants Netanyahu to scale back big time in Gaza. Where do you stand on this? Mm -hmm. Well, this is why we should have a secretary of defense who's able to do his job, because this is a military question. You know, there's a political question for Joe Biden because the base of his party is anti-Israel, pro-Palestinian. But there's a military question. You know, how close is Israel to uh, de decapitating, destroying Hamas? Why hasn't Israel been able to get the sort of two or three top leaders of Hamas? Is Israel taking all the precautions it could to prevent civilian deaths? We don't know the answers to that. And until you have an American military presence in the Middle East, you know, the Secretary of Defense should be in the region. He should be talking to the military leadership to assess this. Sending a Secretary of State and other diplomatic officials, that doesn't do the job. They're doing their political job. You need to have somebody assessing the military situation, and we don't have anybody who can do that. Got it. KT, thanks for joining us this morning. We'll see you again real soon.